Do you want more FPS from your PC? If you have a 12th, 13th, or 14th gen Intel CPU, this application claims to boost your gaming performance. Now I know what you're thinking. We've seen a hundred videos that say boost your FPS in just two minutes or adjust this one setting to change your entire gaming experience. But unlike those videos, this application isn't just changing a random setting in your Nvidia control panel, nor is it just lowering the graphics settings in your game. The application is called Core Director, and this is its core purpose. It's to keep specified processes from from being scheduled to your efficiency cores, thereby keeping them on performant cores. Now there are three different methods in which Core Director attempts to avoid scheduling any of these processes to your efficiency cores. You might even say it shoes them away from your e-cores. The first one is called efficiency mode. This essentially will prevent your scheduled processes from being put into efficiency mode. But if there are more threads than there are available by the P cores, then those, some of those threads will get scheduled to the E cores. The second method is called CPU affinities. This method is intended to restrict all threads to your P cores. So unless a process is intentionally scheduled just for your E cores, it will not get placed there. And the third one is called CPU sets. According to the Bitsum page, this is something in between the first two methods and it leaves a lot of the decision-making up to your operating system. And to be honest, that's about as much information as is available on the Bitsum page from the developer themselves. So rather than talking about this application any further, let's install it and test it out. And to begin, I'm gonna run the Modern Warfare 3 benchmark and a couple of in-game tests on Modern Warfare 3 and Warzone. Because let's be honest, that's my favorite game. However, because we're doing this on my test bench and not my actual gaming PC, uh, I've got about 180 gigabytes of updating to do. So I'm gonna be doing a wardrobe change between now and when we start the tests. Once we run those tests as a baseline with my PC as is, we're gonna install Core Director, set it up so that Call of Duty is not supposed to be running on any of the E cores, and run some more tests and then compare the two. So let's get into it. All right, so you can see from the Modern Warfare 3 benchmark, we averaged about 258 FPS, with 1% lows at 179, and a 0.1% lows at 138. And from the War Mode, you saw we were at about 197 FPS, and then the Warzone Solos match around 170. So let's download Core Director and see if we can make that any better. So we added the Call of Duty file location, Based on kind of what it's saying there, that should be all we need to do to keep Call of Duty off of our E cores. Let's see if it makes any difference. Okay, so we touched absolutely zero settings within Call of Duty itself, and we just ran the Modern Warfare 3 benchmark. Let's see how it did. You can see here the results are pretty much identical with one FPS gained for average and the low fifth. However, the low first is a little bit lower than what we saw previously. I wouldn't have really expected that to change. There's a possibility that the benchmark was coded in a way that the efficiency cores would never get used anyways. So let's move on to actually doing an in-game performance test and see if that changes anything. Okay, so comparing the results here, there is almost no difference. You can see, especially on Warzone, the 1% lows were actually identical. They were at 112 FPS with the average being 167 before and 180 after. That can probably be explained away just by where maybe I landed or how much time I spent in the gulag, etc. I'm gonna say it's completely possible that maybe I didn't set up Core Director correctly, but if I didn't set it up correctly, it's super possible that anyone else trying to use it might not know how to set it up either. And without digging in and doing a bunch of research to try and figure it out, I think I thought of a better way to do this. If you're mainly using your computer for gaming, maybe surfing the web, some stuff like that, you really don't need to use those e cores ever, right? So instead of using Core Director to try and stop processes from using those e cores, why don't we just turn the e cores off completely? Let's try it out, okay? Let's just look in the BIOS and see if we can turn those e cores off real quick. Don't ask me why it turned green. I used the AMD cleanup utility to update my driver recently and it keeps showing up as green now, so I don't know. I don't know what that's about. But we can go in here to advanced CPU settings and then go down to a number of E cores enabled. Auto is gonna be all of them that we're gonna select zero, F10, enter. So literally all we did was go into the BIOS, disable all of our E cores and restart it. Nothing else, it was that simple. Now we're gonna run the Modern Warfare 3 benchmark one more time, see if that made any difference. If it does, we'll do the other two tests again as well. Well, we ran the benchmark and it actually made a little bit of a difference. You can see right here we averaged 266 FPS with a low of 185, which is only slightly above a four, and then the low first was at 142, both of which are a couple percent higher than what we had before. So if we run the Warzone and the multiplayer tests again, maybe we'll see a difference there too. So let's try it out. Well, you might have been able to guess the outcome of this, but I'm gonna tell you anyways. There was basically no difference from the original to actually disabling the E-Cores. So what we learned here today is that maybe Windows is just pretty good at deciding which course should actually be handling your gaming. 
Which means this is yet another one of those cringy videos that says you could boost your FPS in no time, except that it doesn't work. Now, maybe you can do some more research and figure out how to make Core Director work more properly, but as you saw, we completely disabled our eCores and had no difference. So I don't think it's really gonna make much of a difference in most cases. What you can do, and what actually will help, if you can turn off your eCores and overclock your CPU, that should let you boost a little bit higher for a little bit longer because at one, those cores aren't gonna be producing any heat. They're not gonna be taking up any power that could potentially go to the P core. While technically just disabling your eCores doesn't really do much for you, it could be the first step towards getting more performance out of your CPU. And with that, this is another tech tip that's actually debunked. So hopefully you guys can just spend time watching this video and not waste all of your time trying to get that app to work for you. Anyways, hope you enjoyed it. See you on the next one.